Hello, I'm Emmeline Leonard, and I'm a biochemistry major researching visual neuroscience in the Neal Lab. Today, I'm going to talk a bit about my research on the topic of visual attention. The ability to pay attention to specific objects in the environment while ignoring others is critical for survival of organisms that use attention. In scenarios such as crossing the street, we focus on the road and potential obstacles while ignoring objects we classify as unimportant, allowing us to travel safely. How the brain controls this process, called selective attention, is not fully understood. Visual information first enters the eye and hits the retina, which then sends the information along the optic nerve into the center of the brain. In the center of the brain is the thalamus, which serves as a relay center for sensory information. This means that it receives a signal of everything that enters the eye, and then it sorts through the various components of the signal and sends this information off to multiple areas outside the thalamus that can perform higher order processing necessary for accurate perception. One subregion of the thalamus heavily involved in vision is called the LGN. The LGN relays information up to primary visual cortex, referred to as V1, which is a structure involved with developing our basic perception of object contours and movements in our visual field. The pathway is shown here in the left portion of the figure in the background section. Where things get more interesting and mysterious is how the information goes from V1 to higher order processing areas that allow us to see both accurately and with a greater level of detail. While V1 sends some information directly to these higher order areas, there is evidence of another pathway in which the information is sent once again back to the thalamus, this time to a different subregion called the pulvinar. The pulvinar has been implicated in selective attention as it has strong physical connections with both the visual cortex and areas involved in attention, such as the superior colliculus. Additionally, there is evidence that damage to the pulvinar leads to an inability to ignore distracting visual information. Studies have been performed on human patients that involve tasks in which subjects are asked to focus on a specific visual stimulus while ignoring other distracting stimuli. Patients with damage to their pulvinar show deficits in their ability to report changes to a stimulus when distractors are present. I am testing the role of the pulvinar while mice take part in a task that requires selective visual attention. Mice are a strong model organism for visual neuroscience, as their visual systems are highly analogous to that of humans. Mice will be tethered above a running wheel, allowing measurement through a two-photon microscope of activity in pulvinar neurons while being simultaneously presented with a visual stimulus on a computer screen, as shown in the top central figure. The mouse will be trained to report a change in the stimulus by licking a spout to obtain a water reward. When the visual stimulus doesn't change, mice must withhold licking or they will receive an air puff instead of a water reward, discouraging them from falsely reporting a change again. Methods of genetic manipulation exist that allow for silencing of specific neurons in the mouse brain. I will utilize the DREDS technique of introducing a receptor that attaches to pulvinar cells. When I inject a specific drug into the mouse, these receptors become activated and temporarily inhibit activity in cells to which they are attached to in the pulvinar. I will present mice with a behavioral task before and after their neurons are silenced, and I will compare task performance among mice with and without silenced pulvinar neurons. Additionally, I will utilize the fluorescent calcium indicator GCAMP to simultaneously record in cells originating in the pulvinar that project up to V1 through a two-photon microscope. During experiments in which the pulvinar is not shut down, I will develop an analysis through which I can pull out patterns of activation of pulvinar axons in response to the stimulus the mice are presented. So far, in preliminary data collection, I have been able to show that tagging projecting pulvinar axons with GCAMP and recording their activity in V1 results in the cells showing a highly organized response to visual stimuli that follows a strong pattern of retinotopic mapping. This mapping of cellular response is represented as the color gradients present in the figures on the right, showing that pulvinar cells projecting to V1 activate in a spatially and temporally organized fashion in response to a moving stimulus. As this shows that pulvinar projections to V1 are sufficiently present, I will next implement behavioral training for mice to learn the task requiring control of visual attention. I expect to find that upon silencing of the pulvinar neurons, mice will show deficits in their task performance, as the selective pulvinar pathway is now silenced, so there is no longer strong attentional control of perception. I also expect to see increased activation of pulvinar axons in V1 in mice with a non-silenced pulvinar when they perform the behavioral task. Thank you for listening. Please feel free to email me at epl at uoregon.edu if you have any questions. Have a good day.